Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the house of God. So we're going to continue with the book of Revelation. And I want you to please take your Bibles. If you've got a pen and paper, I see Hester, you've got your papers ready. You're taking your notes. Please open your Bibles to the book of Revelation. Right at the back, the last book of the Bible. We are still busy in chapter 1. We've been there for many, many weeks. It just shows you how much you can learn from this book. So we are busy with Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. If you are following on Facebook or YouTube, please tell your friends to come and listen because they're going to be blessed with this message here tonight. So tonight we start with Revelation 1 verse 12. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And it says, if everybody there, everybody, amen? Amen. amen. Then I turned to see. Remember, this is John that's writing what happened with the visions that he received from God while he was on the island of Patmos. He turned to see whose was the voice that was speaking to him. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. Now, this is what our brother tells us what he saw. Now, there's a few interesting facts with regards to this word, and I want to share them with you tonight. And the first thing that you have to ask is, what did he see or what happened when he saw the vision? Now, the first time that I read that, I said, hold on a minute. He, he saw a vision and he heard a voice, but this is what I see there is he turned. He turned when he heard the voice, mm -hmm. right? So many times... We hear a word from God. Can I have an amen? amen? We hear a word, and sometimes it's the devil that sits on your shoulder, if you allow him. Sometimes it's God that whispers in your ear. But there's many children of God who's not always sure, is it God speaking or is it the devil speaking? Come on now, bear with me. So what I learned from that little piece there in the Bible, when I looked at that, I heard that and I said, that's the secret. Because you've got to look... And here at the same time, because he turned to see who was the voice that was speaking to him, to hear the voice, what God was saying. Are you with me? Amen. All right. So in the Old Testament, there was many prophets in those olden days, and they used to come to the nations and gave words from God to the nations. And many of these prophets... Uh, found fulfillment in what they gave the nations like for instance Jeremiah and Isaiah and all those prophets that came to give a hard word for the people from God to say God says if you don't do this now if you don't repent if you don't do this if you don't do that then this and this and this is going to happen and the people never listened to the prophets. They were disobedient. And then those things happened. And then they wanted to come back and run back to the prophet and cry and say, Oh, we're sorry. Tell God we're sorry. Go and cry for us by God and can give us a new word. And many times with children of God, I find it's like that. Sometimes we get a word and we get a word from maybe a prophet of God, like a child of God or a leader of a church who has prophetic gifts. But we don't always want to receive that word because it's not what we want. Hear me? Come on, somebody. It's not what we want. And we don't believe that that word is from God, and so we don't do it. And then God says, well, I leave you over to your own desires. Carry on with your calamities and do what you want to do. Because we need to listen to prophets. Now, what I found is that our brother John was also a prophet, a prophet of God. He, was a, he had a prophetic gift. Uh, he shared what God revealed to him to give to us. And he spoke the true word of God. If you go to the book of Deuteronomy, run about 18.22, the chapter 18, verse 22, you'll see that God always spoke through the prophets. And many of those prophecies remained a mystery, listen, or were sealed as it was with also the prophet Daniel. Daniel was also a prophet, and God also gave him a word, and it was sealed. Now listen, let's go to Daniel 12, verse 8 to 9, that I can just give you the scripture. Daniel said, although I heard, I did not understand. And then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, 
for the words, listen, the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So sometimes God gives a word and he says, this and this is going to happen to you. And then you're waiting for that. But sometimes it's sealed up because God is waiting for the right time. Like he said with Daniel, go your way for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So while an angel told Daniel to seal his vision, another angel told John on the island of Patmos that his word is not going to be sealed. What he said is, uh, right, or, or, or the angel told John not to seal the prophecies that he received from God. He said in this vision, because the time for fulfillment is at hand. So for John, his vision did not have to be closed up or sealed up. It was meant to give it out immediately. Like sometimes uh, a, a, a person with a prophetic gift will give a word to somebody and say, the Lord say this and this. And then sometimes those people forget it. And then two or three months later, something happens and they remember, oh, they said something to that effect. Because it was opened for them to receive it, it was not sealed up. Amen? Amen? These are the differences. So you see that for some visions, Daniel, it was sealed up. But John said, no, no, God said, the time for fulfillment is at hand. We must think that some prophecies um, are not always understood by people. Sometimes you get a word from somebody, and sometimes people take it physically when it's actually meant spiritually. So you need to trust God and that's why it's very important for you to pray for the gift of discernment so that God can give you that gift that when you receive that word, you receive it with your whole heart and you know your spirit can witness the breakthrough is here. Amen? Amen. Right. So John received this and he received these visions from God. And while he was standing there, he heard something behind him. And this is when he turned. You see, sometimes you've got to leave what you're busy with and turn away from that to receive the word from God, to receive the fulfillment, to receive the breakthrough. Come on, somebody. John turned away to see and to hear what was going on. And so in John 14, 26, the Bible says, The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So if you have received a word from somebody, like uh, maybe you get a word from your leader in your church or something, or someone walks in town and they come up to you and they give you a word or something or something like that, okay? If your spirit witness with that, inside of you and the Holy Ghost is with you, always ask God to bring to your remembrance what was said. That's why I said to somebody this week, um, remember what God has promised you. All right? Uh, so the revelation of Jesus Christ gives us insight through the Holy Spirit into prophetic um, actions or prophetic words or prophetic things that are going to happen and events also in the world, not just in our spiritual walk, but also things that are happening in the world today was given to John, which he wrote about in the book of Revelation, because these were the visions that he saw. And some of those things are already happening in the world today. We are already there. All right. So I want to take you quickly to Revelation 19, 11 to 16, where John still wrote, uh, remember, Jesus will come back and literally and visibly be revealed to the world when he appears again, right? As it says in Revelation 19 from 11 to 16, the scripture says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. That's why we know it's Jesus. He is the only faithful and true one. Amen. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no one knew except himself. Listen, he was clothed with a robe 
dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, and we spoke about this, clothed in fine white linen, followed him on white horses. Two weeks ago, we spoke about this. This was Jesus on his white horse and the armies of heaven following him. And I told you two weeks ago, these are not the things that are going to happen after Jesus comes back and people are raised from the dead. This is now. These are the armies of heaven now fighting in the spirit. This is you. You are clothed in fine white linen. You are following Jesus. You are fighting with him. You are clothed with the weapons of warfare, which is Jesus Christ. And you follow him in the heavenlies. You are part of his army. You are a soldier in war. Amen? Amen. All right. So following him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. And that with it should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Okay, so we know who Jesus is. He is our Lord and he is our King. So when we spoke about the armies of heaven in white clothing following Jesus, we stood still at Revelation 1 verse 12. And now we're going to continue from there. And we're going to talk about the candlesticks, which symbolizes the presence of God amongst the churches. So the menorah, as it is known, is a candlestick, is also connected to God's number seven. So the menorah looks like this. It's like a candlestick like this, and it's got one, two, three. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Can you see that there's seven candlesticks there? All right? I'm going to give you a very big revelation just in a minute, so just follow with me. So we're going to continue with this amazing teaching, which describes what it is exactly what John saw. John wants to be sure that we, the children of God, know exactly how special this is. And, you know, remember, number seven is God's perfect number in his word. It talks about wholeness. It talks about an oath with God. It talks about perfection. It talks about spiritual maturity. So seven is a good number in the Bible. So... In any way, so when John turns to see the voice, he beholds. Now, this is what he sees. One like the Son of Man, this is verse 13, standing amidst seven golden lampstands. The first thing I want you to note in this scripture is this. There's one like a Son of Man, and he's standing. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he's standing. So he's not seated on his throne. He's standing, and here he's amidst seven golden lampstands. And we know it is identified by seven churches. If you study the book of Revelation further and you get to verse 20. So let me just take this. If this is a candlestick, everybody with me here on the board. If this is a candlestick and Jesus is amidst, then how can he be here amidst it? These things are sometimes this big, sometimes yay, sometimes this, sometimes you get big ones. How can Jesus be between the seven things? Are you with me? He can either be in front of it or behind it or he can be around it. But he cannot be, Jesus cannot be half here and half here. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So which tells me that what the people miss in this book when they do this teaching is they say that there was only... A, a menorah like this with seven and they say this one talks about one church this one another church this one another church this one this is wrong this is not the way that it is the bible says there were seven golden lampstands a lampstand is this this whole thing is a lampstand so there was lampstands and i put it this way right so there was a lampstand Plus a lampstand. Plus a lampstand. Are you with me? And there were seven of them. Seven golden lampstands. And every single one of these ones was for the church of Pergamos, Laodicea, Thyatira. All those seven churches 
of Revelation, one golden lampstand referred to each and every one of them. Right, it wasn't just one menorah. In the olden days, it was just one, and I'll explain to you now why there was in the temple only one, because it is special reference to what it was in the temple for the people. Right, so Revelation 1, 12, I turned to see whose was the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, he saw the seven golden lampstands. So John turned to see. Now, when he turned around to see the great voice, now, we did about a week or two, three weeks ago, I did a teaching on YouTube about the Lord's Day and the Great War Trumpet. It's a teaching I did on the book of Revelation. Go and study that and listen to that teaching. I think it's like 15 minutes long. And I'd speak about the, the, the voice of God like a war trumpet. So here he says, he was very curious. That's why he turned to see whose was this voice talking to him. And it was like the calling of a war trumpet. And the Latin word there is, I can't even pronounce it. I'm not even going to try. Let's carry on. He says, he saw that vision and he turned around by hearing the voice. And it was then the sound like a war trumpet. I'm giving express um, attention to this because you need to understand how serious this is, what he saw. I would imagine John very curious to see what it is and, and I see in, in my mind how this caught his attention and how he was shocked to hear this voice like a war trumpet behind him. That's why he turned. Can you imagine for one moment you standing here and then in front of you appears God or behind you and you hear this voice like a trumpet and you have to turn around to see that. Do you think that you'd be able to stand up straight? Come on, somebody. No, no. So you must think, that's why I'm saying it over and over. You must understand what he realized what happened there. Okay. Through this great voice what the acting energy was or what the source was from that voice. And he realized it was the voice of God speaking to him. Okay. Probably he turned around to find out where it came from or which direction and to see who the speaker was. I, I read something in a commentary of the Bible and I want to read it to you. Weddon's commentary of the Bible states the following about this little piece. He says, the voice, being all he as yet knows, he turns to see into what embodiment it will shape itself. Come on, someone. So he looked to see if the voice that he heard had a body, if it had a physical body or a spiritual body. Obviously, if he was raptured in the spirit, he could see in the spirit. Because when you are enlightened in the kingdom of God, you can see spiritual things. So he turned to see if this voice that he heard had a, an appearance. Did it have a, a figure or a stature or something? Right, so some people might ask why John sees the candlesticks, the candlesticks, the menorahs, before he sees the face of Jesus. The Bible says it was like the sun shining in full power at midday. Full power. Who has ever stood outside and looked at the sun on its hottest, like 12 o'clock in the noon, and you look up at the sun and you feel that heat upon you? Have you ever had that? Okay. Right. Personally, I believe that the candlesticks, the menorahs, represent the seven churches, were second with regards to importance in this vision. I think it's more important to see Jesus than what it is to see the seven churches. Because Jesus is the one bringing the message to the seven churches. And these messages, as we're going to go along these teachings, are here for us today. For everyone that's here. Right? This message is still for us today. I think that the countenance of Jesus is so bright that you would not be able to stand looking at it. Come on, somebody. Can you imagine for one moment, Jesus stands in front of you. His countenance, the power, the light the strength, the purity that must come from him. 
everything that he consists of right in front of you, I think we will fall down or faint. Come on, someone. You know, people get so excited when they see angels, but I don't think there's nothing to be excited about. An angel is just another servant of God. But when you see Jesus, when he comes back, that's going to be another story. I think many people are just going to fall over from the power and the might. Think about it, all right? So can you imagine looking upon the Godhead standing in front of you right now? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Imagine the Father who created everything. The Son, Jesus, who died for you, for your sins, who gave you redemption, gave you salvation and deliverance, and healed you. And the Holy Spirit, who is now your helper in every situation that you might have, standing here right in front of you right now, what would you do? You won't be able to look at it. Exactly. So imagine what John saw as he was standing there. Right. Okay, so first there was a trumpet voice, then the candlesticks, which represent the churches, and the bodily Godhead invisible person. So many people think it was Jesus or the Father, God himself, speaking to John. But of course, if we read verse 10, we notice that John was in the spirit rapture. So he was enlightened into the kingdom, in the power of God, in the Holy Spirit's power. That's where he was on the Lord's day. When he heard this great voice, like a trumpet, like a war trumpet, not a normal trumpet. This is not a trumpet that came with a nice tune. Da, 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 da. This was not a trumpet that came like an announcement. Da, 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 da. This was not a trumpet that came with another sound like da, 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 da. This was a war trumpet sound. So what does that tell you? Something is happening in the spiritual that God wanted to show John what's happening and he had to come and tell us, look and listen. The war trumpet sounded already when John was on the island of Patmos 2,000 years ago because this book was written 95 after Christ. And so already then God sent the war trumpet call to John to hear so that he had to turn around and see if he could see something visible. So God was preparing us already that a war is coming. We should be ready, which is why now on YouTube I'm doing the weapons of warfare during this week to come. I started this morning already with the first one and the others will be tomorrow and the day after, etc. For next week there will be four or five different teachings on the weapons of warfare. Like I told my sister, the one that's coming tomorrow tells you about the different uh, ranks of demonic influence in the spiritual realm. The one after that will tell you these demonic ranks, how they operate. And the video after that will tell you how you fight against those demonic influences. So these are good teachings this week coming, so don't miss them on YouTube. All right, so there was God showing John what he saw and in the midst of the lampstands through manifestation was Jesus Christ in verse 13 the son of man in other words the son of God right so I, I read something somewhere it's called the Complutensian manuscript and I had to look it up on the internet because I heard something about it and I went to go and search for it and I found this and I thought this is beautiful. I want to share this with you tonight. And what it says is this. The Complutensian manuscript reads, and like, like it's John talking now, okay? He says, and there I turned. That's what it says. And then he saw the bodily Godhead. The Arabic version of the Bible is different. It says, to see who it was that spoke, from whom the voice came, and by whom it was uttered. So you see there's different versions. But what we are sure about is one thing. This was Jesus standing right in front of John. Speaking by a voice like a war trumpet. Telling him right down the time for this fulfillment is near. And yet people are still saying it's going to be 
hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus returns. People, all these things that are happening now in the world around us are the signs of the times. Things that are happening now is written about in the book of Revelation. 95% of this book has already happened. We are waiting for the reappearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who shall come on the clouds of heaven. And we will see him with our own eyes. We shall see the revealing of Christ Jesus. And this is why God said to John, write it down. Tell them I'm coming back. Tell them they're going to see me with their own eyes. Now, I believe because also the Bible says when he does return, they say we will hear a trumpet. Come on now, somebody. Is this not just what happened exactly here with John? He heard the trumpet like a voice speaking to him, a war trumpet. He heard it. And then he turned to see and he saw Jesus. Now, next week, Sunday, we're going to continue about what he saw and how Jesus looked like. And by grace of God, maybe I can make a drawing of what he saw. But listen, this is exactly what happened to John is going to happen when Jesus comes back. And I'm telling you tonight, the time is near. I'm telling you, I'm not giving you a date. I'm not giving you a year because I don't know. Nobody knows. Not even Jesus himself. Mm. The Bible says only the Father knows. But one thing I'm sure, just as it happened with John, in the same way it's going to happen to us. We will hear the war trumpet. And listen, when he returns, it will be a war trumpet. Because he's coming to fight the demons and the devils and the angels and all this nonsense that you are battling with every day. And then when he comes back, we shall be safe in the blink of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, just like this. You shall be changed into the supernatural as he is, as a spirit, as an angel, almost like an angelic being. You'll be changed just like that, says the Bible, and you will be with Christ for a long, long time. And you will reign and rule with him where? Here on the earth. You're not going to jump to another planet. It's going to be here on the same earth. For the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to man. And we must reign over Satan. We must rule over the demons. This is why I'm doing this Weapons of Warfare series. That for those of you who don't know how to fight the devil that you can learn. You're in a war. Listen to the war trumpet because you will hear it. In the spirit, if you listen carefully, you will know when you are going into a battle. And if you know that you are covered with the weapons of warfare with Christ, when you go into that battle, you will know that Christ is with you. For he promises that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So no matter what you are going through tonight, know that he is with you. It, not, it might not be a good thing you're going through. It might be a sickness in your body. It might be a frustration with finances. It might be a child that is rebellious. It might be... Uh, something that you lost, maybe someone that you lost, that you love dearly. Whatever it is, he's still with you. No matter what you're going through, he's still beside you. And he's fighting with you. For he promised that he will not leave you. Alright, so upon turning his sword, I want to talk just quickly, quickly. I'm almost done about this number seven. I'm going to give you this. What the number seven represents. The first one is completeness. Number seven stands for completeness. This is why there was only seven candlesticks, seven menorahs, seven churches. There's a lot of sevens in the book of Revelation. We're, we're going to go through them. And the reason is why, because of what seven represents. Completeness. Certainty. Certainty is faith and confidence in God. It is the Holy Spirit's conviction inside of you. You are certain that you know it's the Holy Spirit. Completeness was fullness, extensiveness, um, wholeness. That's what it means. The next meaning of number seven, the third one is covenant. God has a covenant with you, an oath, a covenant. That's why seven is such an important number. A covenant is an agreement or a contract that God made with you. 
and it is a treaty that you have with him with all his promises in this book belongs to you every single one of them so if i ask you today have you already accepted and claimed every single promise in this word come on out somebody have you claimed every single promise in this word no there's too many so which tells me that you've still got so much growing to do me too i can't recall all the promises in this book i know there's many i can tell you more or less where to find them i can tell you what they mean i can tell you i can teach them to you i can show you where to go when you have a promise but sometimes we forget because there's so many but if we can come to that place where we can have every single promise in this book in our hearts so that when the devil comes you can just call the scriptures up like that come on somebody come on right the next word is oath this is what the number seven means oath this is a promise from god again a pledge that he has made towards you and with you a vow of assurance that is what he did for you when he died on the cross he gave you his word that he will be with you and he will send you somebody else the holy spirit right the fifth word for number seven is perfection perfection is the excellence of everything everything god his kingdom the father the son the holy spirit they are excellent and this word is perfection rightness exactness precision that's what it means the next word is totality number seven means totality entirely wholesome the total sum the full amount it also means all included like i said to you all included every promise in this word every promise all included is yours right the next word is unity unity is harmony in one accord in unison or in union that is what the number seven means and then the last two is variety variety we all know so that's a different type or change or diversity and the last word for number seven positive is wholeness wholeness means to be complete unity or fullness I've given this on my video as well, so you can go and uh, listen to that. And so what he saw was seven golden lampstands. And now that you know what the seven means next week as we continue with these teachings, or even in the week, if I have time, I might do in between until we get to the next one. Next week, we're going to go into the golden lampstands and tell you why they had to be golden. Why were they not white or red or black? I'm going to tell you why God says they had to be golden lampstands. There's a reason why they had to be golden. So don't miss next week's teaching. Everybody, amen. Thank you for watching on Facebook. May God bless you. Please tune in every Sunday night. We do these teachings on the book of Revelation by grace of God and by His grace alone. And we are thankful to know that you are watching. May God bless you. Shalom.